Thomas and Friends is made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Thomas and Friends. Making tracks to great destinations. Dear Christopher, who is your friend, Thomas the Tank Engine? He wanted to come out of the station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them because you helped me to make them. Your loving daddy. James and Daisy. James is waiting at the junction for Thomas. The tank engine was running late. James didn't mind, however. The sun shone, the birds chirped, and he was mostly on time. I reckon. <sighs> I have time for a snooze. He yawned and closed his eyes. However, his nap was soon rudely interrupted by the sharp tooting of a horn. A long green diesel purred into the station. Dreadfully sorry I'm late, dear. Bull on the line, as per usual. James stared blankly. Who are you? he asked. And where's Thomas? Uh, Thomas's driver was ill, explained the diesel. So I'm taking his morning train for him. How unfortunate, said James. For him and me, he added under his breath. Oh, I'm sorry, I just realized I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Daisy. And you are? Waving, said James bluntly. He snorted away, leaving Daisy rather bemused. Nice to meet you, she called earnestly. James tore down the line in the hump, grumbling to himself. Stupid old diesels! Anyone would think Thomas had been replaced! He may run late sometimes, but Thomas is trustable! You can't trust a diesel farther than you can push them! He snorted. He soon arrived at Edward's station, still seething. My, my, you look upset! Said Edward. Care to tell me why? It's that horrible oily thing running Thomas' branch line! How can Thomas trust his branch line to something so... so... so devious? What? asked Edward. I arrived at the station to collect Thomas' passengers, but it Thomas wasn't there! explained James. Instead, it was a horrible, old, smelly, noisy, rusty... Oh, get on with it, James! interrupted Edward. I can't wait here forever! Who did you see running Thomas' branch line? A big green diesel! All right, a big green diesel, echoed Edward thoughtfully. Ah, you mean Daisy. Yes, I've heard of her. You needn't worry, James. I've heard she's quite reliable and friendly, too. Uh, a bit weak against cows, but <laughs> then again, what engine is it? He chuckled. Then his dog's whistle blew, and the old engine steamed away. James, however, still had his doubts. That evening, James returned to the sheds. To his dismay, the other engines were talking about Daisy. Oh, Daisy, said Gordon. Yes, I've heard of her. 
a bit fussy and appreciates the finer things, but a hard worker nonetheless. Now doesn't that sound familiar, James? chirped Henry. James didn't respond. Next morning, James puffed into the station. Daisy was already waiting for him. Oh, hello, she said. Our dear Toby told me about you yesterday. J James, is it? I hear you appreciate a good coat of paint. So do I. I always make sure my fitter... She was cut off as James rudely steamed away with his coaches. Not saying a word. How rude! Huffed Daisy. Later, James met Henry. Having trouble with Daisy, I take it, said Henry slyly. Why should I have to stop for that, that thing? She's only a diesel. She's a disgrace. Oh, come now, James, snapped Henry. Don't be so rude. She's a passenger engine, like Thomas or Gordon. She may run on oil, but we all run on the same rails. Passengers to traveling coaches, pulled by respectable, reliable steam engines. Not in big green boxes with holes, grunted James. Henry thought it was useless to argue more. On James's return journey, he had to stop at the junction again. Ah! He groaned in anticipation, but was relieved to hear a friendly whistle and the puff of a steam engine crawling into the station. Hello, James! said Thomas. Long time no see! Oh, thank goodness! said James. You're back! I never left! chuckled Thomas. Now that my driver's better, I'm back in service! Oh, good! sighed James with relief. It's got to know that old diesel was sent packing. Thomas was confused. Whatever do you mean, James? Oh, that diesel that ran here while you were gone. I had a daisy, was it? <laughs> Glad to see she's been sent packing. Daisy? said Thomas. Daisy isn't gone. She simply runs the trains up and down the branch line with me. As if on cue, Daisy's horn tooted in the distance, and a diesel came swerving into the station. Oh, hello, Thomas, she said sweetly. Her eyes fell on James. Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? Unlike some of us, remarked James, proper work, pulling coaches. What do you mean by that? spluttered Daisy. I do plenty of proper work. Just ask Thomas. Uh, I mean, in, in, indeed she does, said Thomas, unconvincingly. Pa! retorted James, and snorted off in a huff. As James made his way down the main line, dark clouds began to form overhead. Rain began to pour on the rails. James began to slid on the rails. It wasn't long before all of his sand was used up. Soon, he neared Gordon's Hill. Be careful, James! warned the passing Gordon. You'll need help on the hill! Nonsense! said James through gritted teeth. I take a run out of James! checked his driver. But Gordon was right. As James approached the hill, his wheels began to slip. Exhausted, he gave up and backed down the hill. I'll send for a back engine, said the fireman. It wasn't long before the engine arrived. To James's dismay, it was Daisy. Well, well, she said smugly. Is this proper work now, dear? <laughs> James groaned, 
feeling sorry for himself. Daisy smiled. Now, how about we show this hill what we're made of? James agreed. With James in front and Daisy pushing from behind, the two made their way up the hill. Soon, James began to slip again. The engine tugged fiercely at the coach. Come on, come on! He barked. Not so rough, dear. Small Daisy. Calm down so I can push. James did so. And soon, he noticed it became easier. That's better, that's better. Soothed Daisy. Finally, the pair made it over the hill. The engines turned with fire as they coasted down the hill. James glided into the station, and the passengers pulled out out. Daisy drew alongside. Jane smiled widely. Thank you for helping me. How did you do that on the hill? Simply one of the perks of being highly sprung, dear, responded Daisy. James was impressed. The two are now great friends. They often see each other at the junction and chat together about things like being highly sprung and shiny paintwork. James now knows that just because someone is different doesn't mean they can't help.